You found it? Let's stand as we read the word of the Lord. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this level, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, and that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right and or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Together, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with us forever thou goest. Let's pray. Father, we pray this morning that you would touch feeble lips of clay, that they would speak as the oracles of God. We ask that you would bless your people, open our understanding, that we would understand your word. Speak to us from your word, Father. Encourage us as we face challenging days ahead. We know that God, you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so we thank you for all that you're going to do. To you be the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And praise God. Amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to speak to us on, it is time to cross over. It is time to cross over. You can look at that from different perspectives. In that you could say it's time to move from one level in God to another level. It's time to cross over some of the things that are troubling you to get to a place where you can experience the power and the grace of God. God is still a faithful God. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's time to cross over. It's time to cross over. After the death of Moses, the children of Israel found themselves in a state of shock and bewilderment. You can understand because Moses was the man that God called and anointed and appointed to lead them, to guide them, and to direct them in the affairs of the kingdom. The time Moses was before them for a very long time. Whenever they wanted to hear from God, it was the same Moses who heard the word of God and told them what God wanted them to hear. It was the same Moses who stood before them on the bank of the Red Sea and said to them that God is saying that we need to go forward. And so they were, they were familiar with Moses and they were around Moses for a very long time. Back then people would go across the hundred mark. It was easy for so many of them to cross the hundred line. And so they lived a very long time. And so can you imagine that Moses, the servant of God, was before them preaching and proclaiming the word of God for nearly a hundred years. And these folks were very connected to Moses. But something happened and the Bible said that Moses, my servant, is dead. And as a result of that, Joshua, the next person who was in line, along with Caleb, 
had to take responsibility to take God's people forward. Isn't it wonderful to know that God will never stop what he wants to do, even if one person departs? Are you hearing me this morning? That God is a constant God. That God will continue to let his work go forth. It is Jesus who said that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. God always will, will be there for his people. Hallelujah. That even when we go through rough times, God would be there for us. And sometimes I wonder why we have to go through rough times. Why, why we have to? God sometimes will test us. Will bring us to a point where he will test us. But the test is not to tear you apart or to destroy you. It is to encourage you so that you know when a greater test or trial comes along your pathway, you have the resources to deal with it. Oh, glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't buckle when you're going through something. Just hold on to God because God is able. He's able. So for them, it was not just a simple matter to lose their leader. They wept for Moses in the plains of Moab. For 30 days, it was their custom to weep and to mourn. And you gotta weep when you gotta weep. You gotta mourn when you gotta mourn. But by all means, don't stop what you're doing for God. Let me say this to us, that Satan could use a legitimate experience in our lives to stop us from going forward. And if we are not careful, we would allow the enemy to use a legitimate experience to stall us. To cause us not to move forward when God wants us to cross over. Amen. Amen. They knew in Egypt that God wanted them to cross over. It's amazing how easily we forget the word of the Lord. Is it because we're not a reading people today? We got all these little gadgets, you know. Why do you think that the reading score in this country is below most of the developed countries of the world. A little gadget, you know. Guys getting up to speak and they cannot speak. You know when you get married, when, when I was a teenager and going to weddings and, and then when the time came that I got married myself, you know what was the responsibility? It was the man's responsibility to speak for the first time on behalf of, of his wife. And you see guys getting up and they can't talk. Everybody hear this story? Y'all still here? Guy get up and he can't speak. Listen to me. People know what kind of guy the, the man is because he cannot speak. You gotta at least, I mean, you, you got the young lady on your arm and you can't represent her by speaking. And so the problem is that they forgot what God said to them that they had to cross over. There was a time when Caleb reminded Joshua that Moses, a servant of the, God, of, of the Lord, said to me that, you know, he would give me this piece of land or this piece of land was bequeathed to me. And now I feel as young as I was then when Moses spoke to me. And so Josh Caleb said, I just want to go. He was 85 years old. And the man said, I feel as young. Like when the word of the Lord came to me. It's wonderful. That God can give you strength. Give you strength. Give you strength. And all you looking real good for your, all, for your age. You know what God says? He beautified the meek with salvation. You see when I get my little thing and die up my ear? And fix myself up, trust me. I got this stuff, you know, somebody give me some stuff. And say, man, fix yourself up. Every now and again, I watch it on the bookshelf and I say, boy, one of these days, one of these days, you are not gonna be there uh, looking at me. I'll be looking at you. And so, so while it is important and appropriate for them to mourn and weep for the loss of Moses, 
who made a significant impact on their lives, it, was, it is clear to me that there was a pause in the camp of Israel because Moses is no longer with them. It is during this difficult period that God spoke to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all these people unto the land which I do give them, even the children of Israel. Sometimes uh, we've got to pull ourselves up. Yeah. Have you ever been depressed? Oh, yes. 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 Have you ever been discouraged? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. They come discouraged. And I hope that's not depressed. Depression is a serious thing. You don't want to get into depression because it takes a lot to get you out of it. But you know, let me tell you something. Don't let the enemy depress you. Because sometimes you set yourself up to be depressed by the enemy. But if you understand that God will give you grace for every day, every day, every day. And God will make sure that you don't go hungry. The enemy will fight, but God is still able. And you've got to lift yourself and say, devil, I know what you're doing. But I know that God is still able to see me through. I might be down at this moment, but I am not out. I'm going to get up. I'm going to bounce back. And I'm going to be all that God wants me to be. So devil, I'm giving you notice that I am not down and out Amen. and never use these negative words when people ask you how you're feeling I'm struggling the devil's a liar you're a child of God don't say that kind of stuff you declare that I am a child of God I am above never beneath Amen and you get connected with these strange and weird cliches I am struggling and I look at you, you're not struggling. A pastor, you don't know the trouble, the trouble I see and the trouble I go through and all that kind of stuff. God has caused you to be here today. You think of a sister Geneva going down the road, a death in Jamaica, and the devil trying to, to stop up her life by fooling with her. But God came true and gave her the, the, the sense to, to, to do the right thing, not to be able to get into that. Let me tell you, for God is a good God. He watches out for us. Amen. You heard Pastor Carly Moore said that the pole will be coming to him. But God kept it away. The car got damaged. The car can be replaced. But when you, you are gone, you're gone. You heard Brother Mills talk about, Sister Amory talked about their situation. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. The enemy doesn't like you. Are you not hearing me this morning? Yes. Let me put it this way. The devil doesn't like you. And so you got to understand that you are not a friend of the devil. The moment you stand for truth and righteousness, the devil will come after you. If he doesn't come by himself, he will send his agents to come after you. But don't be discouraged. The Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I told you time and again that Satan is not going to come after you if you're not important. Oh, y'all ain't going to be this morning. Let me make you tell the person next to you, I am very important. I am very important. You might not got a million dollars, that doesn't make you important. Barney Madoff had billions of dollars and he's in a jail cell. Are you hearing me this morning? Yes. The person who makes you important is Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Because you don't have to commit suicide because you don't have the material things. Because once you have Jesus, he'll give you peace. He'll give you joy in the midst of your pain and in the midst of your struggle and in the midst of your suffering. And he'll show you ways to, to really enjoy your life. I got some birds in my house. Sometimes I sit there and I hear the birds whistling and singing. And I said, boy, y'all so wonderful. Y'all making me feel so good. That all them seeds and tonic and thing I'm buying for y'all. Y'all got to make the master feel good. You got to do something. I sit next to the one there and he's whistling away. And when they play the music, he's trying to outsing what they're doing. And I said, go for it, boy. Let them know that you're for real here. 
The other day I went myself down to Rundle Mills Mall and I walked up on, on one side of the mall and I saw a man selling helicopters out there. I oh, pray for the pastor. <laughs> and I saw the, the man selling these helicopters. Huh? And I had a little one that a friend of my pastor, Sir Brian, brought as a gift, a gift to me. And I said, man, I need, a, I need one that can fly a little longer than this one to just fly for a few minutes. And I walked into this place and I saw this thing and my eyes lit up. And I said, boy, in every man you got a boy, you know, in every, every man, you let them fool you, in every man you got a boy. And we all got a little toy that we will get connected to. And I decided I'd get my helicopter, negotiate a very good price, and got my helicopter. You take it me alone, Sister Marva came to the house and tell me, let me go outside and fly it. <laughs> and the two of us went outside, and we were testing it because it could go 150 feet up in the air. And Sister Marva and I, and we got, oh, brother. <laughs> Next thing, it going over to the, the, the roof of the neighbor's house, and got to try to control it and to bring it back. Let me tell you something. Every now and again, you need to do something for yourself. And don't sit and wait until somebody else to do stuff for you. You need to do something for your, are you hearing me this morning? That you need to do something. Some of you are waiting for other people to make you happy and they're going to make you miserable. You got to be happy in your 